Hi everyone and welcome back to our series on creating our saving Christmas game. At Christmas I released a game uh, that you can play from the link down below and I thought I'd show you how to make how I made it and teach you some of the things I went through. So you're in there you also find the asset list in the description so click on that download all the assets required for the project. So in the last episode we started work on our goblin and we got him working with the animation. Next we're going to work on the AI. So in our goblin folder we're going to go add new blueprint class and we're going to search for an AI controller. Find it and choose select. We name this one goblin underscore AI and to accompany that we need a blackboard and a behavior tree so go add new artificial intelligence behavior tree goblin underscore BT and finally blackboard goblin underscore BB now I'm not going to go into too much detail about how these work um, I've got loads of videos on AI and how that works so by all means check them out I'm just going to go do a cursory uh, run through this uh, quite at a speed but so if you want to see a much more in-depth video check them out so on my goblin behavior tree we've got a root and we want to go from that root to a selector. This selector is then going to go to two sequences. So we're going to go sequence and sequence. So the selector will only do the left hand one. It will only do this one if this one fails. So if it goes down here, if it gets a fail message from it, it will quit and go back to the top and move to this one. A sequence, however, will run through all the things attached to it in sequence as each one is successful. It will only break the sequence if it fails and therefore the whole sequence fails. So this sequence here is going to be the wandering. So I'm going to change this one to wandering. Change its title. And this one's going to be the chasing. So the AI Fire Goblin is going to be a very similar to the games like World of Warcraft where you have an enemy and if you get anywhere near it, be it they can see you or not, um, it will chase after you and after a certain distance away from its original location it will stop chasing you and return back to it. So uh, we're going to do a few things here. We need to set up first of all the measuring the distance between you and the, uh, the, you and the goblin. So we make a new blueprint task, uh, behavior tree task. Sorry. So go new task and this task is going to be called Calculate distance. So we're going to change the name of this one to calculate distance. And this distance calculation is going to take the event receive execute AI. So as soon as the task is called, we want to get the controlled pawn and get its location. We also want to get the player character get their actor location and we work out a distance between these two vectors so from this top one here I'm going to type in distance and choose distance vector plug in your two vectors and this will return a float which is the number of how many units it is away we're going to store that into our blackboard so on a behavior tree go back to your blackboard go new key and choose float we're going to name this one distance and click save back to your behavior tree or back to the task we're going to go and make a new variable and this can be a blackboard key selector so we're going to call this one bb underscore uh, distance the variable type for this is a blackboard key selector and we'll make it editable and hit compile so this is going to be like a bucket a socket where you plug in a value or receive a value from a task. It's how you get a task to communicate to the behavior tree. So the distance uh, variable here we choose uh, get and from there we're going to go set blackboard value as float. Plug that all in and at the end we're going to go finish execute and tick success. Hit compile and we're going to go to the behavior tree. So I'm wondering, it's going to be checking where the player, uh, the distance from the player. So we're going to go from there and do calculate distance. 
And we want to make sure that BB distance colon is equal to distance. If it isn't, just change it up to the top here to the correct key. So when it calculates its distance, the next thing it's going to do is wander around. So if the distance is below a certain value, that's when we're going to do wandering. So before we do that, let's first of all make a task to find the location to wander to. So I'm going to go new task, and I'm going immediately to rename it. And this is going to be find one uh, find location. Okay, and I'm going to open this up. I'm going to right click event receive execute AI, and this one's going to simply just find a location on the nav mesh. But in particular, it's going to find one around the pawn's origin location. So it's spawn point, essentially. To do that, we're going to right click and get random point in navigable radius. And you see this thing takes an origin. So we need to get a variable from our behavior tree and blackboard and plug it into here. So go into variables, new variable, and go bb underscore origin. And this will be a blackboard key selector type, like so. Tick instance editable, and then drag it out, choose get. From there, we can get blackboard value as vector. And hit compile. Go back to your behavior tree and onto your blackboard and add a new vector key. And this is gonna be called origin. Hit save, and we'll go back to our find location. So this is going to give us a location and then we're going to put this into a, another blackboard key, the target location to run to or move to, sorry. So on the variables, we're going to go new variable, bb underscore target location. And again, that's going to be editable. So click the eyeball to make it editable. And from that, we're going to drag it out, choose get and set value as vector. Hooking it up to the random location. Now on this get random point navigable radius, we need to change the radius here to a higher value than zero, obviously. And this is how far you want it to wander around the origin. So we're going to change that to be uh, 500. So it's got a thousand yard right, uh, distance. Actually, let's make that a lot smaller. Let's go 250. There we go. Hit compile. Oh, sorry. At the end, we need to tell it to finish execute. To so finish execute. And tick the box. Hit compile and close that. So on your behavior tree, we're now going to call that find location. And we'll make sure the BB origin is set to the origin value. And target location is need to be set on your blackboard. So new vector on your blackboard and call it target location. Save. And on your behavior tree, we can change that target location to match the key. Now, we only want to do this if the calculate distance is a certain value. So right click on that, go add decorator, blackboard. And the blackboard value we're going to check is distance. So find distance on your blackboard key. And we want to make sure it is less than. And we want to make sure the key value, the distance between it and the player, is uh, less than 750. So, so long as the player is outside of 750 in the range, it will continue wandering around and not chase the player. If it does uh, fail, that means that this whole thing will fail and then go and start the chasing branch. So after find location, we need to tell it to move to a location. So we're just making it move to a particular location. We're not making it chase or anything like that. So from here, we could use the basic move to that comes with it. And the move to location is going to be the target location. After that, I'm going to make it pause a little bit with a wait before he wanders around again. With the wait, I can change the amount of time it's going to wait. I'm going to leave it as five seconds, uh, but a random deviation of uh, uh, three. So that means the lowest it'll be is two and the highest it'll be is eight seconds. Okay. So I'm gonna click save there. And 
close that. So we've got a behavior tree. We now need to sync that behavior, up, behavior tree up with our AI controller. So open up your AI controller, go to your event graph, and on begin play, we can go run behavior tree. And the BT asset is going to be the goblin BT. After we've done the behavior tree, we're actually going to get the blackboard now. So get blackboard. Because we need to set its origin. So when we get blackboard, we're going to go from there and we're going to go set blackboard key value as vector. And the key name we want to use is make literal and type in origin spelled exactly as it is on our blackboard then the vector value is simply get actor location and the actor we want to use is from there get pawn and you'll see get uh, controlled pawn and that'll get this uh, AI controllers control uh, pawn like so compile and let's close that now we've got the AI controller sold, uh, sorted out we're going to go to our goblin and assign our AI controller so with the class default selected go to the right hand side and you'll see AI controller class change that to your goblin AI and choose compile now if we drag goblin in the world hopefully it should start wandering around and there you go so at the moment he's running with his full speed so let's change his speed to be a walking speed so on goblin um, i'm going to set his default movement speed to 100 so max walk speed 100 and hit compile close that and there you have a wandering goblin so it doesn't see or check it doesn't chase you yet we'll do that in the next part thanks very much for watching if you want to watch that next part right now head over to patreon.com forward slash ryan lately where a donation of just simply one dollar will help me out massively and for that you'll get access to the next part plus all the other parts of this series and loads of other videos too thank you for all my supporters for supporting me in 2019 and here's to an exciting 2020 ahead of us thank you all and i'll see you all next time bye bye Thank mm -hmm. you.